All right, most of us are here. We can get started. So, this is the mausoleum, which contains the final remains of our first president, Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Osajifu means the people's redeemer. It's a title he got after independence. Um, since he died, um, this was actually his third burial place, the third one. He was our president until 1966, 24th of February, when his government was unfortunately overthrown through a military and police coup d'etat. So that forced him to go into exile in a country called Guinea, also in West Africa, where he was accepted and also made co-president of Guinea because of the role he played in their independence struggle much later. That was where he lived till he fell sick in 1971. They took him to Bucharest, Romania, for proper medical care. And that's where the devil's finished. That's him where he died of prostate cancer in 72, at the age of 63. So his body was embalmed and then taken back to Guinea, where he was given a state funeral and burial as co president. But then three months later, they transferred his body from Guinea back to his family house in Ghana. Because at the time he died, Unfortunately, his mother was still alive. And he happened to be the mother's only child. So she was asking to return his body home. That was where he was until when Ghanaians eventually thought that, looking at all he was able to do for us and the continent at large, he deserved a proper national honor. So this was built in 1991 by our then leader, called Jerry John Rawlings. So when he finished here, he was then transferred from his family house to this place. So this is his third, and hopefully his final resting place. It's built of Italian marbles, but the architect was a Ghanaian. And back then, he was one of the leaders on the continent who believed and promoted strongly pan-Africanism and among those who formed the Continental Union, we now call the African Union. So to give a more practical expression to that, he married an African. His wife was an Egyptian, who was called Fatia Nkroma. And she died in 2007, back home in Egypt. But not long after her death, the news came from their kids that it was her wish to very close to her husband. So that request was put before our then government. It was discussed and eventually agreed. So they brought her back, gave her also a state funeral, and eventually they also brought her body. So his wife was laid to rest just on the other side of the mausoleum. She's very right over there. And they have three kids out of the union, two gentlemen now and a lady. But before he married his wife, he had a son from an earlier Ghanaian relationship that makes them four. And all of them are still surviving. Um, three are here currently and one in Egypt. Two of them are also now active politicians. That's the only daughter and the youngest son. But they are also in different political parties. They are not on the same side. Um, the shape or the form of the mausoleum, as we say it, has its own symbolic meaning from the outside. So let me explain when we do that after we step out that side. What the tour guide was talking about. Fatih and Kuma grave right in the memorial.
When we came out of the bus, I realized that everybody's at attention was drawn to that. Mm -hmm. Now, that was one of Kwame Nkrumah's statues which was made soon after independence. Originally, it was complete and then erected in front of our old parliament house. But during the military coup mm. that toppled his government in 66, a lot of his things were unfortunately vandalized mm -hmm. by some ignorant Ghanaians. So the statue was also attacked, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, we lost some of the parts. And until recently, even the broken head of the statue was missing. Mm -hmm. It was just in 2009 that an old lady returned it. Wow. And we were told she was one of Kwame Nkrumah's um, sympathizers, more or less. She found and kept it safe for mm -hmm. all these years. Mm -hmm. And for us to also keep the history still alive, mm -hmm. That's why the head was mounted separate from the body. Mm. As I said, the shape of the mausoleum has its own symbolic meaning. Now from up to the base, it looks so much like a tree stump. It's like a tree growing, but then cut up in the middle. One meaning is that he couldn't finish what he was doing for us before he was overthrown. So more or less, it represents his unfinished work. And often in our villages in Ghana and other parts of the continent, when our farmers are from their farms and tired, they would rest under a shade of a tree. So he's buried down there with a the belief that he's also kind of resting under a shade of a tree. Um, the black star up there stands for all black people, a symbol adopted from Marcus Joseph uh, Garvey. So let's come to the museum. That's it. Let's go here. Nice. All right, yeah. Better. Yeah.